when I'm not having nightmares about AI stealing my job, I'm thinking about which technologies I'm going to learn in 2023, a series that I stole from Ben Awad. Well, during the day at Google, I'm using technologies like Angular, TypeScript, GraphQL, Java, gRPC, C++, and instead of using Git, we actually use a Mercurial-based version control system, which I actually prefer over Git. And then during the nights when I'm working on neat code, I'm also using Angular and TypeScript, and also a bunch of cloud technologies like Firebase and Google Cloud, as well as Stripe for payment processing. Now, there's two reasons I'm even learning new tech for next year. And the first one is that I found technology that can make my site better. So if I learn these things, I can make neatcode.io better. And the second reason is that I found cool technology that I want to learn, and I'll probably try to find a way to squeeze it into neatcode.io just so I can have an excuse for learning it. Now to start with the front end side, firstly, I need to rewrite my entire UI, which is why I'm going to learn either Next.js or SvelteKit. The reason I need to do that is because I started out using Angular. Now the first thing that you have to know is that that Angular is a single page application framework and so is React and so is Svelte. What that means is when you open up neatcode.io, you initially get an HTML document, which is mostly empty. There's a single HTML page. And after the page loads, a bunch of JavaScript is run to actually build the page and then render everything to you as a user. This is called client-side rendering. The good thing about this is that as you navigate through the site, it feels like one cohesive application. Every time you navigate to a new page, you're not rendering a new HTML page. There's just a bunch of JavaScript that's run that modifies the current page. But the downside of this approach is that the initial page load is significantly slower than if we we're using a server-side rendering approach where the HTML page and all of its content is already built and rendered. It just needs to be sent to your browser. This is why Angular is kind of a problem. While Angular does have something called Universal, which is its server-side rendering framework, it's not very popular and people don't have many good things to say about it. So it makes me want to use another framework altogether, either React with Next.js, which just came out with version 13, which kind of gives you the best of both worlds of server-side rendering as well as client-side rendering. And then there's Svelte Kit, which adds server-side rendering to Svelte. The problem is that this just kind of released like a week or two ago, which makes me a bit hesitant to use it. So I'm definitely leaning towards Next.js at this point. The good thing is that the entire UI is only about 10 to 20,000 lines of code. About half of that is TypeScript and the other half is HTML and CSS. So it's not like it's a crazy large migration or anything like that. And it might even be fun. Now, also on the topic of speed, I'm currently using a CDN to serve my single page application. This moves the data closer to your browser. So when you load the site, it loads a little bit faster than if there was just a single centralized server. Now, if I do switch over to server side rendering, I can't really deploy the entire UI on a CDN. CDNs aren't really capable of running like extra logic, but there's this kind of new concept called edge functions or edge servers, which allow you to have a little bit more complicated logic, but then the bottleneck that you end up running into is having a centralized database. And so of course there are companies working on so-called edge databases, but you might be thinking that there's no way that this is the first time that all these problems are being solved. Trying to lower latency, therefore you move data closer to the user. It seems like a pretty simple concept. And yes, big tech companies like Google and others are already doing this, but without these services that are so managed for you, what big tech companies usually do is they have partitioned or replicated databases distributed around the world. They have servers distributed around the world and load balancers will direct your request to the nearest location. Now, as you can imagine, this can be difficult to set up, especially being able to scale things, which is why there are big companies like Google Cloud and AWS, but also smaller companies like Cloudflare and Vercel that are trying to make things as simple as possible for developers. Now, that was a long-winded way of me saying that I want to explore these technologies. Basically, I want to keep my developer experience as simple as possible, but also I want to maximize performance for users. 
Recently, when I added articles to neatcode.io, I knew we were going to have to host a bunch of images. So I was looking for a CDN to do that. Now I'm already deploying my front end to Firebase Hosting, which is a CDN. And I'm deploying most of the existing site images with that bundle so that when you load an image, it's loaded off the CDN. I was tempted to include these images with the bundle that I'm deploying to Firebase Hosting. The main reason I found not to do that is that there is a size limit for Firebase Hosting, which is 10 gigabytes. I don't think realistically I would hit that anytime soon, but just to be safe, I went with a separate CDN. I first tried getting it to work on GCP. After setting up a cloud storage bucket, a Google Cloud CDN, a Google Cloud load balancer, and also an SSL certificate, I then realized I was going to have to get a static IP address, which costs at least $7 a month. So I was thinking there must be a simpler way to do this. I shouldn't have to first set up all this infrastructure and then also have to pay more than I'm expecting. And then I found that Cloudflare actually has a service called Cloudflare Images, which is about five to six bucks a month for my use case. But most importantly, it's so, so simple to use compared to setting up several GCP services. So I ended up going with Cloudflare Images for this, which got me thinking that there must be other ways that Cloudflare can make my experience better. The biggest cost for me running neatcode.io is with the network bandwidth cost. And it looks like Cloudflare CDN is actually pretty much free no matter how much data you're using, I'm sure there is a limit at which point they will start charging you, but their billing system definitely seems to be a bit more predictable than Google Cloud or Firebase. Now, I'll also need to find a way to host my server-side rendering site. At this point, I'm thinking about just hosting it via a Docker container in Google Cloud Run. This is a pretty scalable approach, with the downside being that now my server will be centralized to a single region, but given that I'm going to choose the same region as my database, which is already a regional database, most user requests won't actually take any longer, I don't think. Now, at the same time that I rewrite the UI, I'll probably be switching over to Tailwind. Currently, I'm mostly using CSS that I personally wrote. I'm also using Bulma a bit here and there, but I've probably spent way too much of my life at this point struggling with CSS. So I want to try out Tailwind. It seems like most people enjoy it. And ideally, I'll be able to find a good component library. Tailwind components looks pretty good. It costs a few hundred bucks, though. There's also Daisy UI, which is a free alternative, but I'm not sure if it's as good as Tailwind components. So I'll have to do some research on that. I've been sort of contemplating using a different backend language like Go or even Rust. I do watch anime, so I think I'm qualified to learn Rust. But I'm currently using TypeScript on the backend, and really there's not a lot of backend code. I think it's about two or 3,000 lines of code total. And if I'm just being honest with myself, I really don't have any reason at this point to learn Go or Rust. This is probably me trying to find a use case for them, which at this point I really don't have. Planet Scale is another technology that I probably don't don't need to use. Currently, I'm using Firestore, which is a NoSQL database. It's hosted in a single region. And while it does have some limitations, I haven't really run into them. One of the biggest ones is that you can't really do a lot of complex queries and joins and things like that. Whenever I find myself needing to do that, I usually just dump all the data into BigQuery and then run some queries there. But even then, I've run very, very simple joins. So at this point, I don't see myself needing a relational database. But Planet Scale is basically a startup company, I think, that is taking Vitesse, which is a MySQL sharding engine or wrapper that was created at YouTube. But PlanetScale is basically offering a multi-region database that is automatically sharded and automatically scaled. And from what I know, it's kind of just a super SQL database similar to Google Spanner. And again, I don't really have any use case for learning this. I just thought it was really cool. I learned it from Theo, another YouTuber. And lastly, there is AI, artificial intelligence. I've been recently using GitHub Copilot. I think it's pretty damn useful. It's definitely worth a hundred bucks a year. If it can even make you like 1% more productive, it's probably worth that. But I also have to say that after using ChatGPT, using Copilot just feels so much dumber, even though Copilot came out like a year ago. At this rate, I think AI is becoming way too good, which makes me interested in going back and learning a lot of AI and machine learning stuff. There was a Google paper that came out in 2017 called Attention is All You Need. Apparently, 
apparently it was pretty groundbreaking at the time and it's part of the reason that AI that we use today has gotten so good. So I kind of want to just familiarize myself with AI and stuff. I think it's funny how much hype there was about blockchain and crypto where that hype should have been pointed more at AI because AI is definitely not a joke. It's not a bluff. So we'll have to see what happens, but I'm looking forward to the future. Let me know what you guys are learning, what you guys have planned for next year, and let's see what kind of crazy tech comes out that none of us anticipated.